Okay, have you discovered that you have an interest in learning how to TIG weld? Maybe even went so far as to buy a TIG welding machine and some gear to go with it to get you set up? Maybe even started out with working on some practice exercises with it? But it is usually at this point that people start to discover and experience how difficult it can be to learn to TIG weld. And at this point, one of the worst things starts to set in, and this is frustration. Now, when I first started to learn to TIG weld, I remember I was so excited. I thought TIG welding was the coolest looking thing in the world. The people that were able to do it professionally looked like artists to me. I took a massive interest in wanting to learn how to do it. One thing that I had seen that I wanted to learn desperately was something like the outside corner joint like this here. I was so excited. I was so motivated to learn. I would have done anything to figure it out. But then I discovered stainless steel TIG welding. This stuff was even more magic to me for some reason. I wanted to learn it so bad. Looking at the different examples of the welding joints was like literally something I could not get out of my mind. I was completely obsessed, but when I finally got the opportunity to start practicing and trying out some actual practice passes, I was kind of blown away at all the different intricacies and the different things that I had to pay attention to as I was welding. I had a really tough time manipulating the filler material correctly. I had a really tough time keeping an eye on all the different things I had to pay attention to as I was trying to weld. I had no idea what I was doing. I was wasting all kinds of practice materials, not to mention the time I spent in there banging my head on the table trying to figure it out. At this point, I really started to feel the frustration because I had no idea what I was actually doing. When I was trying to learn, I actually didn't really have anybody to teach me at all. And I actually started to doubt whether I was going to be able to get good at this at all and whether I should just quit. What else can I say? I was super disappointed. The amount of time that I had spent practicing and I had very little results to show for it. Now, this type of story with me as I was first getting going is very common. I hear this from people all the time who write to me. People send me messages about how they're super motivated and super willing to learn. But after they got set up and they started to work on it, they are now feeling stuck. They are feeling frustrated and overwhelmed. And essentially they're starting to feel enough discouragement that they're considering moving on to other projects. So right now I'm going to get you unstuck. Let's go. Okay. Typically what happens is somebody's going to get set up with a TIG welding machine. These days it's way more easy to get your own setup at your own shop or at your own house. A lot of people have access to using TIG welding machines at a shop that they might be working at or something like that. But if I'm being completely honest, the honest truth about a lot of these machines that people are buying or have access to these days, these are actually so confusing to a beginner. No wonder you're overwhelmed. When I first started getting going with TIG welding, I was actually kind of lucky that the TIG welding machine I had access to was completely basic, very limited as far as the settings that I could use. But these days with these machines I have at my shop set up here, they're so packed with great features and different controls. With all the different settings and variables that you can use to set up your machine, this leaves a lot of guesswork for somebody to set up on their own if they have no experience before. I usually recommend that instead of learning all the different settings and all the different things that they actually do, I actually just recommend to forget about a lot of these settings or the majority of them just to get started with. What we're gonna do just to get started, we are just gonna focus on the only ones that actually matter, especially working with TIG welding stainless steel. The nice thing about learning to TIG weld stainless steel is that basically as far as settings, there is very little we actually have to set up. Now in this episode here, I'm going to give you a couple different really important resources to check out after watching this one. The first resource I'm going to give you to check out is an episode where I went over essentially the only important settings that I recommend people paying attention to with their TIG welding machine when they're first getting going with TIG welding stainless steel. What this is going to do is this is going to help to eliminate a lot of the unnecessary settings that we need to worry about, especially when we're just getting set up to get welding. What we're going to focus on is we're going to use these settings to get us completely clean passes with whatever we are doing. And right away, we're going to get some good results to show for it. Now, the subject of amperage obviously is one of the major ones that we need to figure out right off the top. But again, referring to this episode that I'm going to send you to here, a lot of this is going to be figured out. This episode is going to explain why this setting is so important and it's going to give you a few tips on how to get this set up properly for the machine and material that you are using. Essentially what we want to do with setting up these settings is make sure that there is very little guesswork as far as what you actually have to do. Now the next setting that we went over that was a really important one in this episode. This was the subject of post flow. This is going to be a complete breakdown as far as how this setting works with your machine or whatever other machine you may have access to. I'm going to give you a great understanding of the overall importance of this setting as well as how to set it up for yourself. 
For example, when most people start to learn how to TIG weld, a lot of their stuff just looks like this. Don't worry, this is extremely common, it's all good. What we're gonna do is figure out the exact things that are gonna to help to get you results more like this here. This is what we want. Now, the other thing that we're gonna go over of great importance is gonna be the subject of your gas volume. Take a look at all these fancy accessories and all these cups here. I mean, come on, these things look absolutely awesome to use for sure, but we really need to understand how they work in relation to the gas that you are using. Each one of these sizes needs to be set up specifically for different gas volumes coming through it. And again, we cover everything in that episode as far as what you need to know and how it all works. The accessories, all the different gear that you can use for them, the machines themselves, all of these variables as far as setup is a lot for you to figure out on your own, trust me. Keeping things simple is genuinely something that I wish I had heard as far as advice when I first started to learn how to TIG weld. So make sure you take the time to completely go over all of these things before you get going with any practice exercises. Getting familiar with your machine and all the different settings on it is exactly, well, I guess getting familiar with it. You have to get familiar with what the important settings are, how to work them and what they actually do as far as the results that you want. And starting out with the most simple stuff is a great way that we can avoid any overwhelm with any of this subject. Shut up, truck. And then you can gradually start to introduce other settings that you'd like to learn at that point. Now, when I first started to learn how to TIG weld, I was essentially just grabbing random pieces of plate and assembling them into different joint configurations I thought I should learn. Trying to do all these configurations that I thought looked super cool, I would try and try and try. I would use up a bunch of filler rod, I would use up a bunch of different plate material. Like I said, I would spend hours in the shop practicing, so a ton of my own time went into this effort. I would get the odd thing that kind of looked okay, I was kind of stoked on here and there. But as you can imagine, a lot of the stuff I was practicing randomly did not look that great. And one of the most confusing things to me was that I did not understand why I would get good results sometimes and why I would get really terrible results in other times. If I could go back in time, the one thing that I would do to make things so much easier for myself would be to learn exactly what exercises to start practicing first and just stick with them. Again, people contact me all the time with different things that they are trying to learn. And what happens is that people try and duplicate a lot of the awesome things that they see online. It's always going to be difficult to duplicate these results without knowing what comes before it. What I would essentially do to get somebody set up when they are first learning is just to get them started with the right practice exercises as well as the right learning material to follow along with. Essentially, this would kind of be the same thinking about what we talked about as far as setting up the machine settings and only the ones that actually matter. Like we talked about, the machine that we had access to had a ton of different variables and all kinds of cool stuff that we could have tried to use. But again, with the machine and the settings, what was the approach that we were gonna go with? That's right, we're just gonna keep it simple. We can ignore a lot of the different variables and all kinds of stuff that's gonna make it really confusing for us and only focus on the things that are gonna get us the good results that we wanna see at the beginning right away. Now, the first exercises that I teach people, whether in person or working in my online TIG welding program, a lot of the lessons that start us off aren't even going to involve filler material at all yet. We're not gonna work with any kind of complex joint at all. What we're gonna do is only focus on the fundamentals that we wanna work on at the beginning starting to learn the results that we want to see from the bottom up, how to use the understanding that we get each step along the way to take us to the next step. And along the way, we're gonna learn how to break down, scrutinize and understand the results that we see so we can learn from our own work. This is the smart approach that's gonna get us strategically from lesson to lesson so we can get to the trickier stuff a lot more easily. I absolutely, taking this approach here is gonna get you to a level where you are doing more complex joints much more reliably, I guarantee it. Now, the next resource that I'm gonna to recommend to you is something that I absolutely would have paid money for when I first started to want to learn how to TIG weld. I released an online TIG welding class that's gonna take you through all of these fundamental exercises from the bottom up. This is a legit class that I've taught to many people in person for years and years and years. Now it's packaged together in an online platform that you can sign up for and it is completely free. There's no charge, no catch, I mean it, go check it out. What we are gonna do is we're gonna go over the machine in detail as well as the setup around it. We're gonna go over how to properly understand good posture as you are welding as well as comfortable travel. We're gonna go over some of the most fundamental exercises. Most importantly, as we travel along with every step that we do, we are gonna learn how to properly break down, scrutinize and understand our own work. And the best ways we can take everything that we see as far as the work that we are doing and what we can learn from it, good or bad. 
So now you have a couple really good resources to get you going here. And if you are stuck and you are feeling frustrated or discouraged, just know that these feelings are completely common for learning how to TIG weld. And just remember, it's all good. Every one of us, including myself, we all started out at the beginning. I love that I've been able to use my YouTube channel here to help so many people with TIG welding. I still remember vividly when I was first getting going learning, I was super frustrated. I'll never forget that. It was literally just up to me to keep trying it out and figure it out until I got it. I had nobody to help me. Everybody out there gets frustrated when they first start to learn. TIG welding is hard. However, I love that I am able to offer out ways these days that can help people out when they are first getting going. Again, if they want to take it seriously and go professional or if they are just doing it for fun. Just as well as letting them know that when they are learning, they are not alone. This is completely normal and everybody feels this way when they first get going. Be sure, check out all of the resources that I've recommended in this episode here. And as always, do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.